it's Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com with another quick tip for families in intensive care. So recently I was doing a podcast uh, with one of our associates, Darley, Carly Dayton from uh, Dayton ICU Consulting. And Carly is a nurse practitioner in the US who has worked in an ICU where they don't sedate people, even though they put, uh, they put them on a breathing tube and on a ventilator. So in 99% of intensive care units, patients will be sedated and on a ventilator. Now, Carly has shared in a podcast with me that I link towards in this video that patients don't need to be sedated and go into an induced coma because of mechanical ventilation and the breathing tube that obviously offers an alternative and is a very innovative method to um, avoid harming the patients from an induced coma. Now, and she says something that is really revealing on this podcast. She says, we should be more afraid of people not being able to wake, um, not being able to wake up, not being able to recover, not being able to walk again, rather than self extubate, because one of the reasons that patients are being put into an induced coma is to stop avoiding self extubation, i.e. a premature extubation, right? So, but the damage from that is that people won't wake up. The damage from that is that people potentially can't walk again. And we need to shift the focus from trying to wake people up as quickly as possible. You know, and again, if you look at the podcast that I shared with Carly, you'll find all the information in there and we link uh, to that podcast below this video. So that is my quick tip for today. So think twice when you agree to your loved one going into an induced coma, um, because there is an alternative and it can make all the difference and ICUs need to change in order to avoid harming patients in the long run. So that is my quick tip for today. If you have a loved one in intensive care, go to intensivecarehotline.com, call us on one of the numbers on the top of our website, or simply send us an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Also, if you have, uh, also have a look at our a membership for families in intensive care at intensivecaresupport.org. There you have access to me and my team 24 hours a day in a membership area and via email. And we answer all questions intensive care related. If you need a medical record review, please contact us as well. We review medical records in real time so that you can have a second opinion in real time. Also, if you need a medical records review after intensive care, please contact us as well. We review medical records after intensive care if you have unanswered questions. If you need closure or if you're simply suspecting medical negligence, I also offer one-to-one -one consulting with um, clients, doctors, nurses. Uh, you know, I can talk to doctors and nurses directly with you in intensive care in, uh, in relation to treatment for your loved one. And again, giving you a second opinion and simply advocating for the best interests of your loved one. So that's my quick tip for today. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular updates for families in intensive care. Click the like button, click the notification bell. Share the video with your friends and families and comment below what you want to see next or what questions and insights you have from this video. Thanks for watching. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I'll talk to you in a few days. Take care.